Hey third graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. And this is going to be our last science lab um, until we get back from the winter break. So today we're gonna start by talking about weather. Um, we will, we're just gonna talk a little bit about it today. We're going to go into more detail about it um, later on in the school year. So your target says I can observe day-to-day -day weather changes. So hopefully you remember that weather is the condition of the atmosphere in a place for a short period of time. So remember the earth is surrounded by a layer of gases and a layer of clouds. And these things are what control the weather. Whatever is happening way up in the atmosphere affects what weather we get down here on earth, whether it's hot or cold or sunny or rainy or cloudy or snowy, all of those things are determined by what's going on high up in the atmosphere. So in other words, weather describes what it's like outside. When you listen to a weather report or read a forecast or something, there are lots of different parts or components of the weather that are discussed. Weather is not just how hot or cold it is. That's one part of the weather, but there are many other things that we take into account. So it's important to remember all of these things together make up the weather and the weather can change frequently. The weather can change in a matter of minutes or hours or days. We know here, especially lately um, in the morning when we've been coming to school, it's been really, really cold. One morning there was even a little bit of ice on my car, but then by the you know afternoon it's sunny and warmer and a usually a beautiful day. So um, let's talk about the different parts of weather. So one part of the weather is cloud cover, and this just means you know how much of the sky is covered in clouds. Sometimes the sky looks like this; it's a very gray day. The whole sky is covered in clouds and we call this day cloudy or overcast. We can't see the sun, it's just a cloudy gray day. Other times the sky looks like this where we can see part of the sky has clouds and other, part of this, and other parts of the sky are blue and sunny. This is called partly cloudy because part of the sky has clouds and part doesn't. Or other times the um, sky looks like this and it's very sunny and bright and blue and we cannot see any clouds. This would be a sunny or a clear day. So knowing cloud cover is very important because um, if you are going to be participating in activities outside for a long period of time and it's a sunny day, you'd want to know so that you could possibly put on sunscreen to protect yourself from the sun. Another part of the weather is temperature, which means how hot or cold the air outside is. When you listen to a weather report and they say it's 42 degrees there, that's what they're talking about, the outside air temperature. We can use a thermometer to measure the air temperature, or we can describe the temperature by using words like warm, cool, hot, and cold. And knowing the temperature is very important because that will tell you what you need to wear or how you need to dress for the day. Like this morning when I was getting ready for school, I was listening to the weatherman and he said that it was only 33 degrees, which is very cold. So I knew that I need to put on a sweater today. If I was wearing a t-shirt or a tank top, I would be pretty cold. All right. So also temperature tells us what types of activities are safe and okay to do that day. Like today, again, excuse me, since it's a pretty cold and chilly day, going to the pool or the beach or the water park, probably not a good idea because that would be way too cold and I could maybe even get sick. So today's a day where if I was gonna be outside, I would definitely want to be bundled up with you know, a jacket, maybe even a hat and gloves and long pants on to keep me warm, or I could choose activities that are inside. Another part of weather is wind, which means air that is moving. Sometimes the air is moving very, very fast. We call that a windy day. Other times the air is just moving a little bit, but not too hard. We call that a breezy day. 
And other times there's no wind at all and we call that a calm day. Knowing the wind is important because that will help us decide what types of activities are safe or okay or fun to do that day. Flying a kite is good for a breezy day when there's a little wind, but you definitely wouldn't want to fly a kite on a super windy day like this because your kite could break um, or snap apart or it would be difficult for you to control. Also things like playing golf or maybe going out on a boat, you wouldn't want to do those on super windy days either. And then the last part or component of weather is called precipitation. That's a pretty big word, but hopefully it sounds familiar to you. You have learned about precipitation in kindergarten, first and second grade. Precipitation is water or ice that falls from the clouds. And there are four main forms of precipitation. There's snow, rain, sleet, and hail. So the clouds high up in the atmosphere are made of tiny drops of water. They're not made of cotton balls. They're not made of cotton candy. They're made of water. And what happens is when the clouds get too big and heavy and they are unable to hold up all those water droplets anymore, the water droplets fall down to earth. And normally we get rain. However, if, um, if it's cold enough, up there, the water can freeze and turn to ice, and then we can either get um, sleet, snow, or hail. So let's talk about sleet first. This is a picture of sleet. Um, sleet is winter precipitation, meaning it happens, you know, in the cold months of the year because um, sleet starts out as ice high up in the clouds, and then as it's falling down to earth, it passes through some warmer air and it melts and turns back into water or a raindrop. And then before it hits the earth, it passes through really cold air again and refreezes. So it's ice that has melted and then refrozen all on its journey down to the earth. So what that means is that when you touch it, it's going to feel cold and icy, but it's not going to be like a solid block of ice. It's going to feel kind of like a slushy or an icy or a drink like that that has little pieces of ice in it, but it's not solid ice. Um, we here in Texas, we don't get a lot of winter precipitation, but if we do, sleet is usually the one we get. Um, it happens maybe once a year, maybe every couple years we will get sleet. Then there's snow, which is ice, I mean, sorry, um, rain that freezes. It's very powdery and soft. We'll talk more about snow in a minute. And then this last one is hail, which are balls of ice. Each one of these is called a hailstone. It starts out as a raindrop in the cloud and hail happens when there's a big mixture of hot air and cold air and when there's a lot of wind. So we get hail a lot in kind of the spring and summer months. Even though it's ice, we typically don't get hail in the winter because there has to be a lot of warm air also and a lot of wind. So what happens is High up in the clouds, the hail starts as a raindrop. And then as it's falling down to earth, a big gust of wind comes and pushes it back up into the clouds where it's very, very cold. And a, another layer of ice forms around it. Then it starts to fall again. And if it's windy enough, here comes another gust of wind and back up into the clouds and another layer of ice. The, so the windier it is, the more times this is going to happen and the more layers or the bigger your hailstone is going to get. Um, hailstones can tip, typically the ones we see around here are what we call pea-sized. Um, I have seen some nickel-sized before. Some places can get hail that's as big as a a grapefruit or a softball. I even saw on the internet one place got some as big as a basketball. So um, it just depends on how much wind there is and how long it's able to keep that hailstone blowing back up into the clouds and getting more ice on it. So because each time it's getting another layer of ice, when you cut, if you were to like cut open a hailstone, you would see all these layers on it. It's kind of, it looks kind of like an onion. And if you were here in first grade, you may remember that experiment we did with the onion to show how hailstones are formed. 
All right, so those are the main components of weather. The kids that are here in class, they are going to be um, recording today's weather. Like we talked about, weather changes very frequently. It can change, you know, day to day, hour to hour, even minute to minute. So the kids are going to be recording um, today's temperature. They are going to be recording today's cloud cover if it's overcast, partly cloudy or sunny. They're going to be recording if there's any precipitation and um, the wind. If you would like to do this at home, I would love to see what you come up with. Um, take a picture, send it to me, post it on Schoology. Um, you know, depending on what day you view this and do the activity, it might be different than ours because like we said, weather changes every day. So Another thing we're going to do, the kids in class, and if you are at home, this is something you could ask your parents for. Um, if you have been in science lab in previous years, you know that the last week of, of science lab before the winter break, we always make snow that you get to make and take with you. So um, this is not real snow. Like we just talked about snow is made of ice and water. This is fake snow. This is a little, this is a white powder. It's actually made of little bitty tiny pieces of plastic. And when it's mixed with water, those pieces of plastic absorb or soak in the water and they expand and they get really big and fluffy. So um, I'll show you what this looks like in just a second. I got this kind on Amazon, this Insta Snow. If you type in Insta Snow, it literally comes up like this. Um, this is my favorite kind because it gets the biggest and fluffiest and it doesn't have a strong smell. Some of the other kinds like the, they sell at Walmart or Target or the dollar store, which basically do the same thing as this. They have like a much more kind of strong chemically smell and um, they don't get quite as fluffy, but you know, they all work in the same way. So if this is something you'd like to do at home, you could ask your parents, if they can get you some from the dollar store or Target or Walmart, maybe HEB has it. I don't know for sure. Somebody told me Five Below has it. So um, all we're gonna do is put a tiny bit of the powder in the cup. And it only it's only gonna look like a little bit, but remember once I mix it with the water, it's gonna get nice and big and fluffy. All right, and then water. You're gonna add about two ounces of water. So this, the Insta Snow came with the scoop, so this tells me exactly how much I need, which is perfect. And then I'm gonna add water about up to this, this top line right here. And then you don't even have to stir, just watch. The Insta Snow is gonna absorb the water and get nice and big and fluffy. <gasps> Look at that. Whoa, do you see that? You see how it absorbed the water and it expanded? So now I'm just gonna take my spoon Give it a couple, couple little fluffs and stirs to get it nice and big. And there we go, there's our snow. So if you touch it and feel it, it even feels like real snow because it's kind of wet. It's very soft and fluffy. It doesn't feel cold. It's not frozen because there's no ice in it. Um, you don't need to put this in the freezer. In fact, I recommend not putting it in the freezer because it's gonna freeze solid and then when it melts, um, or thaws, it's gonna be squishy and yucky and gross. It's not gonna be fluffy like this. Um, if you have baby brothers or sisters or pets at home, please make sure you keep this away from them so they don't eat it. This is not food. Um, this could make make you sick. This is just you know for fun, just to play with. Um, it's not meant to last forever. After a couple days or week of playing with it, it's probably gonna dry out throw it away. And if you leave it somewhere like a dark place where there's not a lot of sun or air, it could get moldy and yucky. So, you know, keep it somewhere where you're going to remember to throw it out in a few days. So um, it's not meant to last forever, but like I said before, this is something that we do every year. 
So if you um, are still at Pershing Park next year in fourth grade, you will get to make some again to, to keep and take with you. It's a little tradition we have just for fun um, when we get close to the winter holidays and all of that stuff and we're learning about weather. So I hope that you had fun learning about weather and seeing the Insta snow. I hope that you have a great holiday break and I will see you back in January. Bye guys.